What is going on everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel and today I'll be going over my round 11 AFL tips and predictions as well as my round 10 tips and predictions and the big call. So let's get straight into it and as usual we'll go through round 10 to see what I got in the tipping and uh, you know what, I'll, I don't usually tell you what I get before I go through the results but uh, I ended up getting on the ESPN tipping a perfect score of 9 out of 9 and you wouldn't believe how I actually ended up doing that um, but when I went on ESPN tipping I must have clicked Adelaide by mistake and I got the luckiest tip correct because not many people I would have assumed would have tipped the Crows and I got that one correct by the slimmest of margins so I ended up getting, can you believe it, 9 out of 9 so uh, you know I'll, I'll take that uh, but yeah big calls let's just go through those um, and the first game uh, was uh, Brisbane v Richmond and I predicted that Charlie Cameron would have six or more scoring shots. He looked good early, but I think he only ended up getting two or three. So first one incorrect. Next uh, big call was for Patrick Cripps to be back to his best, to have 30 or more touches and seven or more tackles. Sort of got this one close, but uh, he only had the 25 touches and the seven tackles. And the next big call, another one which was very close. My big call was for the Cats to lead by less than 12 points and they led by 13 at half time. Uh, the next big call was between Melbourne and Adelaide was for Cozzy Pickett to kick four or more goals. He only kicked the one, which is a bit disappointing. And uh, speaking of disappointing, the next big call between the Saints and the Dogs, uh, Saints kicked four more goals than behind. So I sort of got this one correct, but the, uh, the funny thing is that uh, we only had eight bloody uh, scoring shots the whole game, so it was sort of hard to do so. We did kick two more goals than behind though, but didn't get it correct. And the next game between Freo and Sydney, my big calls for Freer to come back from three or more goals to win. And I got that one exactly correct. So that's a pretty good big call to get. Next one I predicted between the Eagles and the Giants for 205 points to be combined. Um, but only 170 were. And uh, the next big calls for Alia Alia to have seven or more intercept marks. Um, but he only ended up finishing the game with seven marks in total. So I'm assuming that all of his marks weren't intercepts. So I'll just give that one an incorrect. And it was very close for the last one. My big calls for Parrish and Merrick to combine for 70 or more touches, but they only combined for 67. So I was very close with that one. And uh, as usual, I got the uh, the big calls incorrect. I didn't get more than th I didn't get three or more, which means, of course, I've got to do a punishment. So let me have a look at which one I've got to do. Sort of the likes have been dropping off in terms of punishments for some reason, but the one that got the most likes this week was go to a pub and ask for a potato. Yeah, I don't really know if I want to do this because uh, that's definitely going to be embarrassing. But uh, yeah, I'll try and maybe get that one out next week. Every Tuesday night I go to the pub with my mates. So maybe I might get that one going. I do have a lot of punishments that I haven't actually done as of yet. Um, and the one that um, I will be doing is the uh, buy North Melbourne membership. Um, so I'm going to buy it, but this be the last punishment that I do that involves me spending a lot of money because I don't really want to be coughing up a, a, a lot of money every week just for a punishment. All right, well, this is definitely the uh, the biggest waste of money. The first and last time I'm ever bloody doing this. Um, yeah, don't request any more punishments that involve me wasting my money on random shit. Um, Baby Joey's the cheapest one, and it's still $65. Um, so obviously, I won't be able to unbox it in today's video, but when it gets here... Um, look, look forward to that, but uh, yeah, let's let's uh, waste 65 bucks. And quickly, before we do get into the uh, the tips, I'm going to go quickly through the tipping comp. So I got 9 out of 9, unbelievably. The uh, tipping comp, if you want to join it, it's called Cardman 22s tipping comp. And now I've jumped up to 16th spot, can you believe it? I am 16th, but the two people who are on top of 68 are Excellent and James Drew. And I'm on 66 because I... Have a little bit of initiative that if you get um, nine correct, you get an extra bonus point to maybe help climb your ranks up if you want um, to get the prize, which will probably be uh, like a hundred bucks or something like that. I'm not too quite sure yet. Anyways, let's get straight into the tips for round 11. And uh, the first game is the Western Bulldogs take on the Melbourne Demons Friday night footy. This is going to be game of the round, game of the season. You could almost say two teams, nine and one. Could have been 10. Imagine if they were 10-0 coming into this one. Um, but yeah, they're 9-1. And, and the Ds, uh, they dropped their first game of the season against the Crows, which was very, uh, very unlikely. I didn't think that was going to happen, even though I accidentally ended up tipping them. But uh, yeah, Melbourne ended up losing that one by a point. And they were up by like three goals late in that last quarter. But the Crows fought back at the end. They were very, very good. And a controversial deliberate decision, or should I say non-decision, because... Uh, yeah, it didn't actually get called, and that probably would have uh, given the Ds the win. 
Um, so I, this is going to be a tough one because the D's, uh, they lost last week, but the dogs were absolutely remarkable. They were unstoppable. They absolutely obliterated the Saints, and obviously I was at the game, I vlogged it. Terrible performance from the Saints, but the dogs were just absolutely insane. The midfield dominated. McRae uh, at 41. Bont, 27 and 4 goals. Bailey Dale, 34, I think, and 2 goals. And Norton had 5 goals. Bruce had 3. They were all just amazing. So this one, um, obviously... <laughs> The D's are a lot better than the Saints this year, so this one's going to be very tough. I still think, though, the Dogs are a better side. Um, you know, they just seem more convincing uh, the way they perform, and I've got a better list. But I think this will be a very, very close game. So I'm going to predict Western Bulldogs by four in a thriller, with my big call being that there'll be eight or more lead changes throughout the whole match. Next game, we've got Collingwood taking on Geelong at the MCG. Uh, Saturday afternoon footy. I don't think this will probably attract too much of a crowd, which uh, usually these two sides attract a big crowd, but Collingwood aren't going so well um, this season. They probably should have beaten Port last week. They were pretty impressive. Uh, they started very, very strong, kicking the first four goals of the match, but uh, the power just, you know, gradually got back into the contest. And, uh, well, they were, they were in front for the first three and a half quarters, but then the power just got on top of the end, and they uh, won by the narrowest of margins, which was one point. But I think Pies fans, even though they lost, should be... Uh, satisfied with the way they played because they, you know, I expected them to get blown out of the water by 61 points. Um, and the Cats, you know, they weren't in too impressive. They sort of just got the job done. In the first half, the Suns were a lot better. The, the Cats just kept giving away uh, the ball. They just did what the, uh, the Saints did two weeks ago. Uh, kept kicking points and weren't able to take their chances. And then the Cats, for some, they just kept getting it down there and getting goals. Um, and then the second half, I didn't really quite catch it, but the uh, the Cats, just, they just got the job done. So this one's a pretty straightforward tip. Uh, you got to go the Cats. I know the Cats aren't amazing at the G, but they're a lot better side than the Pies. But I think this will be pretty uh, close. I think this will be a close, congested, tight match that'll be quite low scoring. Um, the Pies, they, you know, every they've lost eight games. You'd expect that they've had a few thumpings this round, this year. But no, they've only... I think their biggest loss was only 30 points against the Swans. So they, they've been in most games they've played. They just haven't played uh, great footy at all. And I think another one, uh, this will be another game that will be pretty close. Um, um, but I'm going to tip the Cats. I think we should all, I think we can all agree the Cats will probably win this game. I'll go the Cats by 13 points. My big call, less than 22 goals are scored combined. And the next game, we go down to the Gabba between the Brisbane Lions and the GWS Giants. And both sides were very impressive on the weekend. Um, I would almost say to the GWS in particular. I mean, they, were, they, they didn't have Toby Green. I think they didn't have another out. And I thought, well, shit, maybe I should have changed my tip back to the Eagles. I know the Eagles aren't amazing away, but it was a very uh, good game up until the last quarter where the Giants got the, uh, the second hand over the Eagles and ended up winning by 16 points. Were very impressive. I don't really watch the game, but, uh, you know, the Giants, they're, they're now into the top eight. And I, I think they could, they could make finals this year. That's definitely for sure. Whilst the Lions, I caught this game on my stream. Um, and they were very, very good. It was sort of tight uh, up until half time, but then the Lions broke away in the second half, kicking eight goals to three, and they, yeah, they looked, you know, unstoppable in that second half, and it goes to show why they are a, still a top four contender, and, you know, it goes to show why I tip them for the flag, because it could easily still happen. So, this one, I think it's still pretty straightforward. The Lions are just in a lot better form, although the Giants are in some pretty good form themselves, not gonna lie, but being at the Gabba, I think it'll be, Sort of a close one. The Giants will definitely be in it, but the Lions should be too strong and win the game by 17 points. My big call, McCluggage and Lyon combined for 65 or more touches. They have stood up brilliantly ever since Neil uh, was injured. So the next game we've got, well, for sure a mock buster. Not many people I don't think will be going to this one. I'll be going, but I'm probably going to be one of 14 to be going to this game. And that's going to be St Kilda taking on North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. Um, and both sides, we'd probably say, were the... Most disappointing sides of the round, for sure. Definitely, definitely the Saints, though. I mean, the Roos, we didn't really expect them to win. They really didn't put up much of an effort for most of the game. They were all right for patches. In that third quarter, they did actually win the quarter against the Bombers. But uh, the Bombers, they kicked 22 goals. And when you can see 22 goals against the Bombers, uh, yeah, you're not very good. Um, but we did that earlier this year, and we also did that against the Dogs this round, which was, uh, well, 21 goals, but still far out. We were absolutely abysmal in that game. They couldn't have done it. They couldn't have played any better on the weekend, and I don't think we could have played any worse. They ended up winning by 111 points, 39 scoring shots to eight. We could have lost that game by a whole lot more. 
it was just a dis a depressing performance for for the Saints. Just a terrible game to watch for us. And uh, yeah, it, well, it just put it puts a line through our season for sure because our percentage is now down to 74 percent. No, 72 percent. Honestly, if we we're playing any other team this week, I would probably tip the other team. But we're playing North. We can't drop it against North. We'll, we'll bounce back, hopefully, and I reckon we get the job done by 30 points. But my big call will be that North Melbourne lead at quarter time. Next game, we've got Gold Coast taking on Hawthorne at TIO Stadium. Um, not many games are played up there in Darwin, so uh, yeah, I don't think the Hawks have actually played there before. Uh, both sides weren't too great at all. I'd say the Suns probably more disappointing because, you know, I, I said it earlier, they actually could have won that game if they took their chances early on. But the Hawks, um, they were all right, actually. They, they kept up with the Blues for most of the game. It was tight. It was actually pretty... Uh, Pretty good game, but the skills were atrocious for both sides, I'm not going to lie. And the Blues, they showed why they're a better side than the Hawks, and they won that by 23 points. So, two sides that are probably going to be uh, down near the bottom four this year. Uh, it's probably not going to be a very uh, entertaining game to watch at all. It's going to be probably sloppy and up there in Darwin. I'm assuming it's probably going to be quite wet and slippery. So, uh, the skills, yeah, it's going to be pretty, the skill level will be pretty shocking. Um, but I think the Suns are still a better uh, side than the Hawks. Um, I think we can all agree on that. And based off form, um, and based off that, and the fact that the Hawks have never played up there in Darwin, I'm going to go the Suns to win this one by 23 points with my big call. Ben King has a good game and kicks five or more goals. And the next Saturday night game, which is another one that's probably not going to be too uh, much of a thriller. It's between West Coast and Essendon at Optus Stadium. Um, I would have to say though, Essen definitely played better than the, uh, the Eagles this round. I know they played North, but they were very impressive. They just look like they look like a top eight side, really. And I, I rate the Bombers this year. They they lost three close games. If they've won those close games, they'd be up there contending for top four. So the Bombers, they're impressive this year. Um, and the Eagles, you know, they probably dropped the game that they expected to win. Although it was a 50-50 game, I. I heading into it, so it wasn't really too uh, surprising that they didn't get the job done. Um, so I think this one is probably a pretty straightforward one considering the game's played at Optus, but if it was played at Marvel, I probably would have uh, tipped the Bombers, but um, the uh, the Bombers knocked off the uh, Eagles at Optus a couple years ago in an upset, um, so this could easily happen this year, but I just can't see it happening. Um, I just can't see the, bomb the Eagles dropping it there. They very, very rarely lose at home. Um, and I don't think they'll be doing it um, after losing against the Giants and they should bounce back pretty comfortably and win the game by 25 points and um, a big call nine goals are scored combined in the first term uh, we move on to the Sunday games and the first game is between the Tigers and the Crows at the MCG um, the Tigers were all right against the Lions, but they were exposed in that second half um, and I don't think they're premiership favorites anymore but I wouldn't be surprised obviously if they do end up winning it this year um, yeah, they, they weren't too great. 28 to 16 in the free kick count didn't really help, but yeah, they weren't amazing. The, the Tigers, the Lions were way too strong. The Crows, on the other hand, were very impressive. Not many people gave them a chance. Ended up winning the game by one point, and they sort of looked out uh, late in that last quarter. Um, down by 16 points. Oliver, he had an absolute outstanding game, but uh, Adelaide just ended up winning in the, by the narrowest of margins, and uh, you know, I wouldn't say keep their season alive, but uh, puts them in good stead. But they really need to win this. They they need to win this game. And I don't see them dropping a game against Adelaide at home. If it was away, maybe, but still, I'm going to have to go to the Tigers. Tigers should win comfortably by 33 points with my big call that there'll be 10 more goals than behind scored combined. Second last game of the round, we've got the Sydney Swans taking on Carlton. Um, Sydney were very, very, very close in that game. Buddy Franklin kicked six. Um, and they dropped the game by two points after being up by 15 at half time. Um, but uh, yeah, they kicked none in that last third quarter to four. So that's sort of what, uh, what, what cost them at the end, really. And Carlton, I wasn't surprised at that result either. I thought, you know, I thought maybe the Blues would uh, take control of the game early on a little bit more than what they did. But they still ended up winning it pretty comfortably uh, against the Hawks. If I want to be smart, you've got to go the Swans. They've been in better form than the Blues. Um, and they're a better side than the Blues, especially at home. But the Blues definitely have a, a sniff this uh, in this game, and they, they haven't really been smashed at all this year, just like Collingwood. But they've never really been able to hold out games against quality opposition, and against the Swans, I don't know if they'll get the job done. I'm going to have to tip the Swans in this one by 
Uh, 14 points with my big call uh, being that the Swans come back behind from 20 or more points at any stage in the game and win. And the last game of the round is between the Power and the Dockers. Probably be a pretty shit game, not gonna lie. The Power uh, haven't been in great form as of late. We're very, very lucky to win against the Pies. Escaped a bullet. They played very poorly um, against the Pies. I think all I think all Port fans can agree on that one. And you know, the week prior they lost the Dogs. So they haven't been in amazing form. As of late, and the Dockers, well, they're starting to find a bit of form. They beat the Swans in an absolute thriller. Nat Five kicked the winner, um, and you know it just it gives them a little bit of hope for this season that it's uh, not over yet. If they can upset over the Power, then for sure the Dockers' season is still alive. But you know the Power, they're they're way too strong at Adelaide Oval. Um, they rarely drop a game there, and only really top quality opposition, just like the Dogs. So I think this one is a pretty straightforward tip. Um, the, the Power. Yeah, they're a much better outfit, and the, the Dockers aren't very good away from home, uh, particularly Adelaide Oval. So I reckon that this one should be pretty straightforward, uh, the power to win the game by 37 points. My big call being that the Dockers are goalless at quarter time. But there you go, guys. Those were my round 11 tips and predictions. Comment down a punishment below that you want to see me do if I get less than three of these big calls correct. And it's only ever happened once. So if you get the most likes, you've got a very good chance of me and having to end up doing it. But as usual, uh, make sure it's an appropriate one, something that you know doesn't involve me spending any really any money on and uh, something that won't get me into trouble. And if so, I'll be doing that. If you wanna join my tipping comp, I've almost got 600 people to join. Uh, Cardman22's tipping comp on ESPN Tipping. Search that up. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and tomorrow I'll finally get the bloody AFL Evo 2 coach career out. I know I was I wasn't able to get it out last week, but uh, every Wednesday should be happening. See you guys soon in my next video. Cheers.